So I wanted to do this video. Uh, oh, hey folks, how you doing? Dave McRae here. Almost forgot to do that. So before I dive into my thoughts on the interview between Danielle Harris and Tony Moran, uh, because I don't want to forget this, uh, I do want to acknowledge everybody out there that did reach out to me on social media. My phone was lighting up like a Christmas tree this past weekend from many of you saying that Danielle Harris had uh, mentioned my video and wanted to speak with me in her second Instagram video this past weekend where she was sort of clarifying her thoughts and her intentions on Tony Moran, a, a sort of kind of a semi response to my video. Uh, I did get your messages. I really appreciate it. You know, I appreciate you guys. Um, I did not reach out to Danielle publicly because, listen, I've spent over 20 years in the business myself and uh, it's not, that's just not my style. Um, it would depend on the subject matter and the circumstance. Um, but I wanted to do it sort of behind closed doors and um, virtual closed doors, if you will. So I did reach out to her, uh, albeit it is difficult to get in touch with her because she uh, she does remove a lot of the uh, ability to message her across her social media platforms, which is understandable. I mean, she has a lot of followers and if she, if she didn't do that, she'd be getting, you know, God, 500 messages a day. Um, so I completely understand that. However, I did reach out to you, Danielle, uh, via your official website, which I know is probably not the best place to do it, and your uh, Facebook page. So if you are still interested, uh, by all means, let me know. Uh, check the uh, check either of those uh, spots and let me know your thoughts and we can go from there. Now, it's also important to note that um, Danielle did not say that she wanted to come on the channel. She didn't say she wanted to do an interview. She, I'm paraphrasing, but she said something to the effect of, uh, Dave, you know, uh, call me, we can have a Zoom chat or something. Uh, that's very different than let me come on your channel and, you know, have an interview. Uh, maybe she wants to do that. Maybe she doesn't. But we also have to remember that the 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 catalyst, the, the whole point of reaching out to me in that way was to sort of, you know, set the record straight to me, uh, not necessarily come on my channel. And now that she's all, you know, she's done this interview with Tony and she already set the record straight sort of in that IG video, um, she probably doesn't feel it's necessary to speak to me anymore. And, and, and I kind of agree, at least about Tony Moran. Um, if Danielle wants to come on and talk shop and talk about her upcoming projects and uh, conventions and, and Halloween, we certainly would not not touch on Halloween for you guys out there, um, then she's more than welcome to. And uh, I'd love to have her on. And, and I think it'd be a lot of fun for sure. But I'd like to talk to her more than just about Jamie Lloyd and, and, uh, and Annie Brackett. I, I'd like to talk to her about her career and and uh, being a mom and and uh, you know what that's like being in the business as well. I mean, I, I don't have any kids, so I can only imagine if I had kids how much more difficult that would be. Um, you know, and just just other things. You know, beyond sort of maybe what you know uh, know about her or what you think you know about her. Uh, so the invitation is there. The door is open. Danielle would love to have you on the channel. I think that'd be amazing. Uh, let me know your thoughts. But I completely understand if if the moment has kind of passed. <laughs> I, I I totally get it. Um, so let's dive into uh, what I thought of this interview between Danielle and Tony. Now, he did apologize for the gay slur. Um, according to Tony Moran, it, it all started, I don't know how long ago or where, uh, but apparently, according to, according to Tony, uh, Tyler Maine had uh, said something derogatory about him to a fan. And that fan went over to Tony and told Tony what Tyler Maine said. Uh, now, Danielle didn't follow up with what that was. That's something that that I would have asked. Uh, and Tony has every right to, to decline to answer. Um, but clearly that rubbed Tony the wrong way. And, and he's not making excuses. Uh, he said, it, it, it doesn't mean I have to say what I said. But that, that was sort of the catalyst uh, that, that uh, caused this resentment towards Tyler Maine. Well, depending on how long ago that was, prior to uh, the incident on the video, it makes me wonder why Tony didn't reach out to Tyler to sort of, you know, clear the air and find out what's going on. Was Tyler being serious? Was he just fucking around? But, you know, what's, what's the situation? Um, you know, so I, I really don't know the details there. Um, I would have liked to have known a bit more there. Um, but apparently that, that is sort of the why uh, even though it's not an excuse. Uh, he opened up and, and uh, said that his daughter is, uh, I think he said she's 16, 15 going on 16, or maybe she's 16 already. Uh, apparently she's gay. Um, so 
obviously that is a um, uh, that's obviously a conversation that uh, he should probably have with his daughter before she sees the video if she hasn't already. Um, and those can be tough conversations to have with your you know with your child. I, I don't know how close or not close he is with his daughter. Um, but certainly if that's true, then yeah, you probably want to get ahead of that. Um, you know, um, he did apologize for what he said about Jamie Lee Curtis, John Carpenter, and Deborah Hill accusing Jamie Lee Curtis of sleeping with everybody on set. He came out and said he has absolutely no evidence of that whatsoever. Um, he said that he has absolutely no evidence whatsoever that John Carpenter beat Deborah Hill. Um, but he did say that he saw Deborah Hill on set with sunglasses on inside, and it looked like she might have had a black eye over her, you know, her right eye may have been, you know, black. Um, and then he just put two and two together and made a giant assumption because of his abusive father. And he was sort of, in his opinion, was recognizing, uh, abuse because he was very familiar with it. Well, again, like I've been saying all along, is he right? Oh, he, he may have been, uh, but there's no evidence for it in terms of anything else that's come out about it. And whether or not Deborah Hill was inside with sunglasses with a black guy really is now Tony's word against, uh, I guess, his own. Um, I don't know if anybody else would remember that from the set. So, uh, and he, he, he apologized. He said, I have no evidence of that. I have no evidence that he was, you know, um, a girlfriend beater or a woman beater. Uh, and that should have been the kind of information that you lead with. So I think overall, Danielle did um, a really good job. You know, uh, there were some things that I wish she would have followed up with. You know, when you are interviewing somebody, you know, about difficult things, um, you know, I understand, especially when it's dealing with a, a colleague, a coworker, a friend, an acquaintance, uh, these conversations can often be difficult. Uh, but if we are going to sit down and, and, you know, the person I am talking to is open to, you know, talking, unless they had talked beforehand and said, listen, I can talk about this, but I don't want to talk about this. You can ask me this, but I really don't want to get in, into details about this. She may, they, they may have had that conversation, uh, but watching it objectively, uh, there were some follow-up questions about certain things dealing with Tyler Maine and, and, uh, you know, Deborah Hill and all that, that I wanted to ask, um, you know, and I'm a firm believer, obviously it's not this black and white, but I'm a firm believer, generally speaking, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I think you can um, handle difficult questions with tact and, and dignity and, and uh, respect. Um, and then it's up to the individual whether or not they want to answer that or not. Um, and then if they don't want to answer it, you have to respect that. But there were some follow-up questions that I wish she would have asked. Um, but overall, I th you know, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I think, I think the LGBTQ community will be satisfied with it, uh, with his apology for using the gay slur. I, I don't want to speak for them, obviously. Some will, some may not. Um, but I could see sort of it being, okay, you know, done. I'll end this video with this. Um, I think, and it kind of comes full circle, uh, one of the major issues, and I'm purely speculating, of course, with, I think with Tony, uh, and this goes back to the very first video I uploaded talking about him in 2017. And I believe the title of that video was something like Tony Moran, Own Your Role or something. And although he's gotten better, um, and I don't have any personal beef with the man. I don't know the man personally. So it's just an observation. I just found it interesting because it's something that I would never do, um, is that I don't believe he's ever really fully embraced what his role was. I think he was embarrassed by it. I think he was, I think he's telling the truth when he says, I can't believe that people want to fucking line up for my autograph. I was on screen for five seconds. What the fuck are you doing? I believe he means that. Uh, and I believe he thought that. Now, maybe he doesn't think that anymore, but I believe that he felt insecure and, 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 he perhaps had to create an alter ego, a different persona, um, and tell these whoppers of these stories to make himself feel or, or appear more important than he really was. And now the irony of that is, is that although he was only on screen for five seconds, you are unmasked Michael Myers. And that was sort of the point of my video four years ago that you own that. Nobody can take that away from you. People are not lining up around the corner to have your autograph because 
you know, because you have a whopper of a story to tell about John Carpenter. They're not lining up because, you know, they think you were on set. I mean, most people know the story, Tony. Most people know the real deal. They're there because you were on screen for five seconds. They want your autograph because you were unmasked Michael Myers. They care. They don't care. They don't care. So the, the need to overcompensate and, and create the illusion that your role is, is bigger than it is might not just be for the fans. It might be to help himself feel better about being at a convention with the likes of, you know, Nick Castle and now James Jude Courtney or, or well, I guess he's not really at these, at those conventions anymore, at least not lately, but certainly in the past and, you know, wherever he is, right? Um, and he doesn't need to do that. And I think he gets himself into trouble when he does that because he feels the need to tell these stories. He needs to entertain. Well, they're here. I got to give them something, right? So he's telling these stories. And I think some of them, like I said, are half truths, but I think some of them are bold, have been bold faced lies. And, uh, and then it just, he gets, he gets into trouble, you know, and he shoots from the hip and he's a very emotional person, a very angry person, as he, as he said in his, his, uh, his, his video with Danielle. Um, and, you know, I think it's just, it, it's a combination of a number of factors. And I've said it from the very beginning, and I'll say it again. Tony Moran, you do not need to create the illusion that your role was bigger than it really was because nobody is lining up to get your autograph thinking your role is bigger than it was. They just want to meet unmasked Michael Myers. You know, that's all they care about. Um, so own it, be proud of it. And, um, you know, you belong there. You belong there. You belong there just as much as anybody else, you know? Um, and how cool is that? You were unmasked Michael Myers. That's pretty fucking cool, dude. That's pretty fucking cool. So I, I again, I'm purely speculating, um, but I think that's been part of the problem, that a lot of the stories he tells is based on true events. And we know what based on true events means when you're about to watch a movie. Yet yeah, this is true. And then this is created for the sake of entertainment. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of been the problem. Anyways, um, again, speculation but but that's how i've how i've always felt so hopefully in the future he can own that role a bit more and then i don't think he's going to get himself into trouble at least not into trouble in that way he does have other issues in his life that i hope he i hope he reaches out to other people in his life that uh, he needs to apologize to there are other people there are other layers to tony's uh, antics and and the things that that he's gotten himself into beyond uh, Michael Myers um, and how he handles that uh, and the stories he's told. Um, so hopefully he does reach out to certain people and, and try to mend some fences. Um, I hope he does that. But hopefully from here on out, he can just own his role and then he will not get himself into trouble um, with these crazy stories. And, um, and when somebody says something to you that is offensive or you hear something, I think he should go over and, and I don't know why he hasn't talked to Tyler. Maybe he's tried. Maybe Tyler's told him the fuck off. I, I don't know. Um, but that's a question I would have asked, you know, is did you try to reach out to him before you got to the point where you had to use a gay slur, you know? It's like, you know, when you get to that point, it's like maybe you should have talked, you know? Um, but anyway, folks, that's going to do it for me. My name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or check out my IMDb or my official websites, it's all down below in the uh, description. Check them out until your heart's content. And when your heart is content, check them out again. Uh, that is going to do it for me. Uh, like I said, let me know your thoughts below. Um, if you want to see the video, of course, it is in the description and it is in the pinned post at the top of uh, the comment section on this video. Keep it civil in the comment section, please. Uh, you know, I don't give a frog's fat ass who you vote for or, uh, you know, I just just leave politics out of it. I, I really couldn't care less uh, and keep it to uh, chatting about um, stuff that matters. Okay? Uh, not that politics couldn't matter, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. All right, folks, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.